Ahem. Hi guys, Captain Off here. We're gonna talk about Castlevania Episode 2. Um, a little disclaimer. I watched both episodes and I enjoyed the character Carmilla, but I unfortunately did a little bit of a, um, what should we say, spoiler hoop or. Basically, I introduced Carmilla in episode 1, and she didn't show up in episode 1. I did a little, what should we call it? Mistake. I did a little character mistake showing up in wrong episode in my mind. Anyway, we continue with the story with our heroes, this part in the video. Because most of the part that Carmilla said in the other video, I already said. So we continue. Alright? It's a bit like I took a character from episode 2, and yeah. You know, like this. Character from episode 2, eh, into episode 1 review, so... A little bit of a mistake here. But she was an interesting character, that's why. Alright? Okay. So, we begin with Alucard and Trevor Belmont and Saifa talking about going to um, the ancestral home of Belmont Trevor. And the episode is called Old Homes. Wait, was what the episode called? Old homes? Yep. Yes. Old familial homes, we should say. Anyway, they were talking around a campfire with some horses about, you know, Dracula's mother or uh, Alucard's mother. And she was like, you know, um, Sypho was like, why do you not burn with flames? And he's like, yeah, I'm half human, half vampire, half human. So I'm kind of resistant against fire. And they were talking about Alucard's, you know, a bit of Alucard's childhood and important stuff and also about what if his mother was alive instead of being burned by the asshole Judge Frodo 2.0 and that actually, you know, I kind of like Alucard in this episode because he's like Trevor, shut up! And Trevor is like um, he's like, you know, doing a very rude joke to him because he's the son of Dracula. Secondly, he's basically talking about that his mother actually knocked on his door in the first episode of the first season, mm -hmm. if you remember that. And he basically talked that they had a love passion and she actually, uh, Saifa com comments on this and like, Ooh, I want to hear that story. And he's like, um, I'm not talking about that one. Because it's basically his mother and you get the point. Yes. The birds and the bees. Anyway, though, so he's basically talking about the achievements that his father is. He's a philosopher. He's a, he's many good things. But unfortunately, because his wife died like a freaking... The thing is this, it's like, I understand, but it's like, the woman should have like, maybe called him or something? Something? But I understand, she wanted him to explore humanity's good side, which is a good thing. And they're talking and chit-chatting, and Trevor Belmont is like, How could you, your mother was a doctor. How did Dracula teach a human woman to be a doctor? And he's like, yeah, he learned her a lot of stuff. And he basically talks about, he basically, you know, he kind of in this episode admires his father in one way. Even if he hates him and wants to kill him now, he kind of in, admires him because he says he has knowledge of 300 years of, or basically, just imagine three decades of knowledge that people forgot and they became like freaking Middle Ages three times over, pretty much. So, um, yeah, he, I see some form of Alucard still being like admiratious to his father. Mm -hmm. And then Trevor Belmont is like, Oh, did she, did he learn her bloodletting? And he's like, shut up, Alucard, yes. Oh, wait, not Alucard, um, Alucard said, shut up, Belmont, seriously, you're rude. And I think Sci-Fi is saying in the background, seriously, this guy is rude. And, yeah, after that, they hear some noise, and they turn off the campfire, and they hear Dracula's army coming. Aggressive, of course, but they are on the road so they could stop them. So Trevor is like, yeah, I'm jumping up to the tree and fucking hiding my ass. And Sypha is like, oh my god. 
They are not coordinated. And try, um, sorry, my throat. I need to drink. Ah, perfect. Ah, Alucard, the beautiful guy with the beautiful sword and very good, nice fashion sense. He's like, I'm not, I'm not working with Trevor, and like moves and attacks, and it's gonna go attack there. And she's like, Oh my! She's like, Oh my god! She's like, Oh my god! And she's like, Ah, whatever. I'm gonna do my magic soon. So Trevor is basically on. Uh, Trevor Belmont is basically up on the position. Cypher is basically gonna prepare with magic, and Alucard is like, I'm gonna be the show off of this episode. And he's like, Come. And they're like, ah, ah, We wanna come and eat you. And Alucard is like, One more step, and you shall not pass. Like, like kind of like Gandalf. If he was younger and badass. And then we see some cool sword moves. And he's like stabbing them with holy blue flames. And we're like, ah! And the monster's like, ah! Yeah, that's the monster scream, right? I'm not good at monster screams, right? <laughs> I'm not good at that. And then we see some really cool, cool courier. Um, some really cool parkour shit with Belmont. He's like, whipping, shoof! And the monster drops his fucking spear. And the monster is actually smart in this episode. The giant big bat monster is flying with the freaking pterodactyl monster like this. And they're flying like, wee, wee, and have a spear, like, trying to stab him. And Alucard is like, holy shit. But he's like, eh, this is nothing. To be fair, technically, if you think about it, he was trained by Dracula. And I think he was trained at perfect swordsmanship because he dodges shit. Like, would be human impossible to dodge. Pretty much, wouldn't it? And we also see one of the Alucard's badass powers from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And he's like, Ning! teleportation, shing! teleportation, shing! teleportation again. Like, silent. And then we see some cool badass action with the. <clears throat> Sorry, my foot again. The action superb. But we see some cool action with uh, Alucard and Trevor Belmont. And they even bond. They're like, yay, we're smiling. We're actually agreeing on something when we kill monsters. And then Cypher comes in and like, kick the monster's ass. And, and the monster's like, fire, hell, breathing. Ooh. And then they are preparing. <laughs> Firing and everything. You know... You know which music could have fit in here right then when the monster was firing the big giant fireball? The one from Ring uh, Ring and Notre Dame, then I. And Hellfire! You know that one? That one is so famous that you know. You know that one, guys. But the thing is, it's like the Hellfire song. It could have fit there. So the monster throws the big giant fireball, and she basically does some form of Avatar badass shit, and she's like holding in the fireball and like. Firing it back at him, and the monster like, oh, and he's like, oh shit, <laughs> explodes the hundred pieces, and one of the monsters escape and fly, <laughs> and then our main protagonist says, yeah, and then the main protagonist says, they're not gonna bother Greshif anymore, and they're like, yeah, we agree on that one, but we ruined the goddamn carriages and horses. Ah, in the castle. Now we go back to the villains. Sorry for mentioning that. It took a long time because it was a badass scene, that's why. Anyway, um... So what happened in the castle? Yes. They were planning about more strategies of which towns they should invade and yada yada. They were discussing like idiots. Not discussing like idiots, but... They were restless. Mm -hmm. So to say. So what happened was they were talking about the weaknesses about the vampires themselves, and a bit of more vampire lore by Camilla. And they were talking about that they were weak to water. To running water. That could kill them. Mm -hmm. But the Viking uh, vampire, the cool Viking vampire, was actually saying that this has not killed them for centuries. What? Good, uh... Good run, yes. Good and Dracula is like, oh my god, I'm getting tired with these fucking fools. So Carmilla is butting heads with the, you know, the Swedish vamp. We should just say the Swedish vampire Viking guy. 
kinda. Yeah. So he basically says that they run around on water, but then one of the Smith masters, Isaac, is like saying, would not water run, like, when he's saying, I'm taking baths and stuff, and they're like, seriously, you say that you take baths? And he's like, yeah, I do. Mm. But it's like, water kills you, you know? And he's like, no, I take this running water from the, you know, water that I pour on myself. And Carmilla is basically saying, ha, huh, yeah, of course, but you couldn't see even a different fucking poison. She swore that, actually. Sorry, but she swore, actually, that. But you know what I mean. She's like insulting the other vampire and yada yada and she even says we don't even have a vampire manual for how we should live <laughs> and Dracula's like he's like oh my god he's like this oh my god why am I standing with these piece of shits and then he's like silence and then they're talking about the plants and about the water city and trying to like I said in the other episode, trying to cut it off or something like that. Trying to fix the situation. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, Isaac, I think it's Isaac or the other one. The other one with animals. Hector. Hector. One of them says that the bat monster that our main protagonist almost killed but escaped said they had been attacked by some assailants on the road before the Greshes. Mm -hmm. And the road assailant was accompanied with the son of Dracula. And Dracula's like, what the f Why did you not mention this to me before? Sorry for that one. But um, they were like, yeah. You know, the most funniest comment is that Carmilla's like, holy shit. And then when they hear the mentioning of Simon Belmont or Trevor Belmont, they're like, holy fucking shit. Are they not extinct? <laughs> and uh, he says, apparently not. From what I heard from the vampire scout beast monster. And they're like, um, this is the most funniest part in the video. Uh, in my opinion, in, in the video that I watched of uh, the series. He's like, uh, the Swedish vampire Viking is like, what is the problem with this Belmont character? And then Carmilla expositories rage, complete fully, awesome as seen, badass dominance, but rage. She's saying, you do not fucking know what they did to us in centuries, for centuries and decades. They are hunting us like freaking, I don't know, mosquitoes or beasts for centuries. You got him. <laughs> like, they're a big deal. Basically, the Trevor family are basically like the pop stars or the famous but unfamous for the vampires. And the interesting thing about, part of, about this episode is that we also see how the vampires feel about them. Because the Asian vampire, every other vampire in their goddamn room are like, what the fuck? And also she says that they gather, they basically are, just imagine hoarders, except with dangerous fucking artifacts. Oh, it's like the Brotherhood of Steel in Fallout 4. Except they're the more dangerous one. And they hoard centuries of magic and shit that killed them. And they're like, do you not fucking know what they are? And he's like, no. He's like, and she's basically saying they have hunted us for centuries, decades, you bastard. And she even mentions the, she even knows, hey, she even knows, um, hope you enjoyed the video anyway. But um, Carmilla even knows about the Trevor Belmont pothole. But if you think about it, as the saying goes, have your friends closer and your enemies even closer. Isn't it? So, um, she basically says about it, and she basically, in the whole episode of the end, she basically swears at the other guy, like, screaming, damn it, you bastard. And, in the end, she says to the Lord, uh, to the Dracula, she says, such incompetent general you have here, Dracula, seriously, how can this war propaganda, not war propaganda, sorry, this war mission of yours, of vengeance, Succeed with these incompetent fools! And then she smiles and looks awfully menacing like this. And then it ends pretty badass with her smiling. Hmm. I cannot do that smile, but you know. You know if you've seen the episode. But I like the characters pretty badass. 
Secondly, I kind of feel more sympathy towards Hector. For Hector, actually. Mm -hmm. The guy that Smith is with a hammer. I don't know why. I like guys with hammers. Anyway, overall, this episode was excellent. Dracula was talking a lot of stuff. He was like, oh my god. But also Dracula, I think he feels a bit remorse because he slashed his son, secondly. So, my score for this episode is... What should I say? You guys know already. 10 out of 10 for music. Character animation 5. 10 out of 10, no questions asked. Voice acting. 10 out of 10. Story. Still, 10 out of 10. Um, character design. A uh, 9 or a 7. A 7. A 7, actually. Pretty good, but not pretty bad either. But overall, excellent. Very perfect for Halloween. I'm just saying. And it came out on Halloween, but I wanted to do the review before, but I couldn't because of personal reasons. We see you next time. Bye bye. Add videos in. Captain Malfort, signing out.